so understand this. Matter of fact, hold that for a second. Because you see our sisters walking out here today. We came out here early. First thing, we get up in the morning just to come out here for y'all. We came out here and we saw sisters walking around in their underwear. That's right. In your underwear. Sis, don't, what do they call them? Stockings or uh, leggings? Those are, that's for you to wear in your house. Why are you walking down the street to the store in that? Right. That's not modest apparel. No. Our foremothers dressed beautifully. Give me right. Ezekiel 16 and verse 10. Like, yeah. show you how yeah. our foremothers dressed. Right? Because they didn't wear pants. Understand, even in slavery, when we were when our foremothers was in the, in the cotton fields and in the sugar cane fields, they wore a dress. You understand that? It's on your fly. It's on your fly when you open it up in the inside, you'll see the slave images and our sisters are wearing dresses. Sis, I see you looking at this picture right here. Do you know who that is? They tell us that that's God, right? That that white man right there is God, right? No, it's supposed to be. That's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Understand, this Bible was written for us by us. The first man in the Bible was a black man. A that's right. That's right. Everybody that wrote or, or fit any prophecies according to this Bible was a black man that brought it to us. That's you right. understand? Give me Genesis 2 and 7. I'm going to show you that the first man God created was a black man. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So it said, God formed man of the dust of the ground. Sis, I know there's a lot of grass right here, but when you look at the dust of the ground and the dirt on the top, what color is that? Black, right? The first man that God created was a black man. That's right. Do you understand that? Our forefathers were black. They tell you that in the scriptures. Why haven't our pastors ever shown us this according to the Bible? Prince was a black man. The first man that God created was a black man. Solomon was a black man. We're going to prove it to you. What's this? Read. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. What? I am black. That's clear cut. Solomon just told you I am black. That's right. So wait a minute. Because Christ was supposed to come out of the lineage of David and Solomon, right? So how is it that they give us this image if his forefather was a black man? Bring it up. How did he mysteriously change color to a perfectly formed white man? What? Blue what? eyes, long stringy hair. How did that happen? Give me Baruch. Uh, black man. Baruch 3? 48. They changed it. Yeah, 48. Because I'm going to show you what they did according to the Bible. That's right. I'm going to show you what they did Because they took the image that Christ gave us And they replaced it with theirs Read That's it. right The book of 1 Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48 yeah. And laid open the book of the law So they laid open the book of the law So understand this You see this book right here This whole Bible is a law book That's This right. is not a religious book It's a life book That's If right. your life is to be maximized You must do it according to God's word That's You understand right. that? Read on Wherein the heathen uh -huh. has sought to paint the likeness of their images. The heathen sought to paint the images of their likeness. So according to Revelations 1 and 14, get that because we're going to bring that out. According to Revelation chapter 1 and 14, Christ was actually a black man, right. right? But they took that image and they say, you know what? We don't need that. Give them this image right here. So now when our people come out, we killing one another because we don't see Christ in each other. Right. We don't see us. We don't see ourselves in that brother, that sister. So that's why we treat each other the way that we treat each that's other today. Right. We have to keep God's laws and commandments. You understand that? Hold it. Do y'all love God? Y'all love God. You love God? How do we love God? What has the pastor been teaching y'all all of these years? How do you love God? Damn. I'll tell you what he teach you. Work. Worship. Exactly. That's what he tell you. You just got to believe in the Lord Jesus. Love him with all your heart. Is that it? Yeah. No, is that it? No, that's no. crazy as hell, sis. Because you got to understand this. I can tell you I love you all day. Right. And still beat you upside your head. Right. So make sure that you ain't eating. Make sure you right. don't got a house over your head. Is that love? That's not love. But I tell you I love you every day, right? All day. So according to the yeah. Bible, we have to have an understanding on how God wants us to love him. Right. Read. First John, chapter 5 and verse 3. For this 
is the love of God. So understand, the topic is love. How do we love God? The Bible is going to tell you. Read. That we keep his commandments. Wait a minute. Because when we go to church, the churches tell us that we don't got to use the Old Testament no more. But where do you read God's commandments? Because right now we're reading out of the New Testament. And it said that you have to keep God's commandments and that's how you love him. So where are God's commandments found in the Bible? Because the pastor said we don't got to follow the Old Testament. It is somewhere, sis. It's in the Old Testament. That's right. Understand this. They say we don't follow the Old Testament. We go by the New Testament, right? Now, we all went to school before, right? You can't go from basic math to algebra without having a basic understanding of one plus one is two. That's two right. plus two is four. Right. So how could you understand the New Testament and you don't know what the Old You're Testament is talking right. about? So How does that make sense? It don't make sense. It don't make sense, right? So we got to keep God's laws and commandments. Now I'm about to bring out a law because y'all said y'all love God, right? Right. Since you say you love God, yes. you go to church, don't you? Yes. Every weekend. <laughs> right? Yes. I guarantee you, this scripture I'm about to pull out, you've never heard it. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Bring it up. Bring it up. You've never heard this now because remember, the love of God is to keep his commandments. That's right. Right? So if his commandments are only found in the Old Testament, this is a commandment that you should be keeping. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman. So we're talking about the woman, right? right. Read. Shall not wear. Stop. It says shall not wear because I want to break this down word for word. It says the woman, that's who we're talking about, shall not wear. So we're talking about putting something on. Read. That. Which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What does a man wear today that belongs to a woman? A dress, right? So what does a woman wear that belongs to a man? Pants. So according to the Bible, a woman is not supposed to be wearing pants. Yes, You understand that? We're supposed to wear a dress. We're supposed to dress modestly. You need First Timothy 2 and 9. We're supposed to dress modestly. All right, so understand this. Matter of fact, hold that for a second because you see our sisters walking out here today. We came out here early. First thing, we get up in the morning just to come out here for y'all. We came out here and we saw sisters walking around in their underwear. That's right. In your underwear. Sis, don't, what do they call them? Stockings or uh, leggings? Those are, that's for you to wear in your house. Why are you walking down the street to the store in that? Right. That's not modest apparel. Our foremothers dress beautifully. Give me oh, Ezekiel 16 and verse 10. Like, yeah. Show you how our foremothers dressed, right? Because they didn't wear pants. Understand? Even in slavery, when we were, when our foremothers was in the, in the cotton fields and in the sugar cane fields, they wore a dress. You understand that? It's on your fly. It's on your fly. When you open it up in the inside, you'll see the slave images, and our sisters are wearing dresses. You understand that? So why did like? Hold on, hold, hold on, real quick. Let me finish this off, and then I'm gonna deal with your question. All right? Read. The Book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, and verse 10. Bring it out. So we're about to show you what our sisters dress like, what they look like, what God gave them. Right? Read. Verse 10. I clothe thee also with broader work, uh -huh. and show thee with badger skin, uh -huh. and I girded thee about with fine linen. With fine linen. Today, our sisters out here walking around with underwear on. That's not fine linen, sis. That's underwear. Read on. And I covered thee with silk. He covered you with silk, sis. Today, you ain't cotton. You understand that? We wore sick silk. We wore a uh, badger skin. We were well dressed. But let's continue. Read on. I take thee also with ornaments. Uh huh. What are these ornaments? Read. And I put bracelets upon thy hands. He put bracelets upon your hands, sis. Read. And a chain on thy neck. And a chain on your neck, sis. We were decked out in gold. We had silver. We had diamonds. We was fine, sis. That's Read. Right. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. Uh -huh. And sis, we had jewels on our forehead. So uh, they wasn't just on our fault on our necks and on our hands. They were on our forehead, our necks, all the way down to our body, uh, all the way down to our feet. Right. Read. And earrings in thy ears. And earrings in your ears, sis. Our sisters dress beautifully. Read on. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. And a beautiful crown upon your head. Woo! No. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver. You were decked out with gold and silver, sis. 
not cubic zirconia, not covered in platinum, covered in gold. You were decked out in real gold, real That's silver. Right. You right. understand that? But what happened? Let's see what happened now that you're in the conditions. Let's see what God says. Give me Isaiah 3. Uh, what else here? So let's see what happened. Because we didn't want to follow God's orders. We didn't want to follow what God wanted us to do. He put curses on our sisters. Right? Yeah, read. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty uh -huh. and walk with stretched forth necks. Uh -huh. So, I'm going to give you an image of what our sisters do. Our sisters walk up and down the street. They in their underwear. They're showing their butt. They just throwing in that all back and forth, right? That's what they're doing, right? Read. Hello. And wanting. Sorry. And wanting eyes. And wanting eyes. Read. Walking and mincing as they go. Walking and mincing as they go. That's those sisters you can see them walking down the street and you can see all of their bodies all over the place. Right? Read. And making a tickling with their feet. Read. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. So this is the part I wanted to get to. So he smite the, the, the head, the crown of your head, right? So that's why our sisters now today, they try to cover up that baldness with weave and wigs now because they ball up under there. That's the color of the most I gave them. So now our sisters walking around with drop tops, uh, suicide doors, the edges is gone, right? Because they broke God's laws and commandments. So that's why I ain't playing with y'all, right? We. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. The most high God is going to discover your secret parts. Since you understand that? Your body parts. Those are your secret parts. Read. In that day, uh -huh. the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments. So guess what? You know why you walk around in sackcloth now? You know why you don't walk around in gold and silver? Because yeah. the most high God took that away from you. Read. About their feet uh -huh. and their claws and their round tires like the moon. Uh -huh. So the most high God has punished you. Now you are not in a royal state that you should be in uh, because right you up. wanted to wear pants. Right. You wanted to follow the custom of the other nations. But guess what God says? Give me Proverbs 3 and 31. Right, Proverbs 3 and 31. Because we take on the customs of our oppressors. That's why we blonde our hair. We we, we, we go out and we uh, color our hair blonde, red, or purple. Because we're following after our oppressors. That's right. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Bring it out. Envy, not, envy thou not the oppressor. God says, don't envy your oppressors. Right. Sis. What you have in your hair shows that you envy your oppressor. That's what you right. have in your hair, sis, shows that you envy your oppressor. That's it's right. subconscious. Some of you don't even realize that that's what you're doing. Because we have been taught that from generation to generation. Right. You understand that? We learned that from our oppressors. Right. But now the prophets are back to let you know that you are God's chosen people. Right. That you are special people unto the Most High God. Right. That you right. no longer have to stay in the conditions that you in, sis. Right. You understand that? God has chosen you. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Bring it out. The Most High God has chosen you above all nations. You all are special. Bro, what's your name? Tonya. what's your name, bro? Daquan. Daquan. Yours? Haji. 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 Okay, all of y'all are special ones to the Most High God. Now understand, I'm not just telling you this, I'm going to show you this according to the Bible. Right? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. you know? For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Sis, listen, brothers, the Most High God has chosen you to be special unto himself. Right? But he's going to tell you in this verse how special you are. You're different from everybody else. Read. Above all people. Wait a minute. The Most High says that you are above all people. Now, we went to school, right? A lot of y'all went to school, right? So you have above, equal, and lesser. This scripture just told you that there is no one equal to you. You are above all of them. Right. You understand that? Read on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Uh -huh. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you are more in number than any. Hey, people. sis, sis, on that flyer, sis, on that flyer right there, we got classes seven days a week. Alright? 
a little more than three times a day now. Look at the flyer, sis. Go over those classes, and if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call because we'll answer them using the Bible. They're not going to come out of our own vain thoughts. They're going to come out of the scriptures according to God. Now, remember, how do you love God? Worship. Worship. Keeping God's commandments. Right. Get that again. You got to understand this. Before you leave this, because you're going to walk up in that church and you're going to be worshiping God and you don't have no clue of what you're doing. Come in, sis. Come in. How do you worship God? Because you say you've been worshiping God. How have you been worshiping God? Praying. You've been praying? Yeah, praying Give me that. Let's see Let's see what the Bible says. Because you say you pray, right? You pray every day. Let's see what the Bible says. Read. The book of John, chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God does not hear the prayers of sinners, sis. Let me ask you a question. Are you in are you in the midst of sin, sis? Are you in the midst of sin? You are in the midst of sin, right? So is God hearing your prayers according to what this Bible says? No, right? So you praying every day, is it doing you any good? No. Because according to the Bible, you got to be keeping God's laws and commandments. That's how you show him love. That's how we know God, by keeping his laws and commandments. That is the only way you're going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Give me Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. There's no other way, sis. The only way is to keep God's laws and commandments. Oh, you got to come out of those pants. You got to come out of those wicked behind churches. All those pastors are doing is divining for your money. They're after you for your money, sis. That's it. You know how I know they're after you for your money? You live here? Yeah, if I'm giving Where your pastor live at? I just go in there and jump up a temple. He live in a house, right? He got a nice house. I guarantee you that. He got a nice car, too. Right? Where you working? Where you working? I work at the bank. No, I said where he working. Where he work? I don't know where he working. You don't know where he work, right? It's amazing how we go to church every Sunday to our pastor that's teaching, but we don't know where he work at. Bring up. He might not have a job. Sis, let's do the math on something real quick. If you got 100 people in your church, right, and 100 people every week give $100, how much money is that? You're talking about a couple thousand dollars right now, right? Right? So now, understand this. If you pay that every week for the next four weeks, that's over $4,000, sis. Where the rest of the money at? Yeah. Because your light, water, and gas has been paid ten times over. Where's the rest of the money? Why are you living in these conditions? Oh, that's right. Read what you got. Get out. The book of Na Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. Get Get out. Out. And behold, one came and said to him. So it said, behold, one came and said unto him. He came to Christ. He's going to ask Christ a question. This is the question that you should be asking your pastors. Okay. But they're not going to give you the right answer because they don't know it. Read. Okay. Good master. What good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? So the question is, is what good thing must I do that I may have eternal life? All right, read. Because that's the ending result, right? We want eternal life. That's why we worship. That's why we serve God. Because we want eternal life. Read. And he said to him, why callest thou me good? I said, why are you calling me good? Read. There is not good but one. There is none good. But one, God's going to, Christ is going to tell you who that is. Read. That is God. That is God. Read on. But if thou will enter into life, but if you want to enter into eternal life, sis, listen carefully. Read. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. What have your pastor been telling you? How do you get into the kingdom? What have your pastor been telling you? Before you heard the scripture today, how did you know to get into the kingdom of heaven? How are you going to get there? <laughs> you wasn't gonna get there, right? Yeah. You wasn't gonna get there. Give me what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13, and verse 30. Bring it then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be Hold on, hold on. Sis, this scripture is about to be pertaining to you. So you say you love God, right? You want to keep God's laws and commandments, right? So let's see if you're gonna abide by this after today. Start immediately. Read. Verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in it, sight deeper than the skin, uh -huh. and there be in it a yellow, thin hair. Sis, you see that on the top of your head? It actually used to be called yellow, yellow. but we call it blonde today, blonde. right? But it's yellow. Right, read on. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Sis, that thing on your head says that you are unclean. We on. It is a dry scale, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. 
So wait a minute. You think that that thing on your hair look fly, but according to the Bible, that's a disease. It's a disease. It's a disease. So since you got to get rid of that thing, we got to return to the Most High God and start keeping His laws and commandments. That's the only way we're going to come together and get the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand that? The kingdom is of heaven is for you. It's not for everybody else. It's for you. We go. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thorns were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit. So wait a minute. Now we're talking about God, the Heavenly Father. Right? It said the ancient of days did sit. Now, when you go to church, a lot of our churches like to say Christ is the spirit, God is the spirit, right? But it said that the ancient of days did sit. In order for you to sit down, you have to have a body. Yeah. Read. Right. Whose garment was white as snow. Wait a minute. That further proves that Christ had a body, that God had a body, because it said that his what? Whose garment? His garment. Meaning he had on clothes. Read. Was, was white as snow. Right. Was white as snow. Sure. Well, it ain't fully white today, bro. It looks like you've been doing a little bit of work. Yeah. All right. But it was snow. white as snow. Read. Yeah. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Sis, that hair that you have up under that pure, thing. Pure now. Yeah, no, sis. That that <laughs> hair that you have is special, sis. Right. That's woolly hair. Right. That right. is the most valuable hair Natural. on this planet. Natural. Natural. Oh. Natural. Curly Woolly here. Yes, Christ had woolly here, sis. Christ no, had woolly no here. Her. So listen, when no, you decide no, to put no. that on your head, you're cl you're clearly saying that I'm you know saying, what? I don't care. I, I don't care what Christ, Christ. looks like. You don't appreciate Christ. That's what you say. Christ had woolly here. His mother had woolly here. His father had woolly here. Yes, the right, prophets, right, according right. to the Bible, had woolly here. Yes, yes, right. You understand that, sis? So now that you know that you're not supposed to have that on your head. Now that you know that you are Israelite according to the Bible, what does the Most High God require us to do? Be pure. Be pure? Let's see what God requires us to do. Take off my hand. Take off yours. Yeah, you want to take it off. Let's see what the Most High God requires us to do. Hey, sis, from this day forward, right? If it doesn't come out of the scriptures, don't use it. Don't abide by what your pastors are saying if he's not bringing it out of the scriptures. Read it for yourself, sis. We give that fly out. We come out here and we teach our people, but we prove what we're saying according to the Bible. Right. All right? right? And that's what your pastor should be doing, but he's not doing that. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Right. And now, Israel, who do the Lord thy like God, require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy like God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy like God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So sis, make sure from this day forward, in order for you to show God that you love him, you must be keeping his commandments. Yeah, and throw right. that thing away. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org